Hey there y'all, <clears throat> Prophet David Taylor here. Um, as you know I have to upload this video, still having internet issues, but I want to be sure to release the word of the Lord. <clears throat> uh, now you know my tagline is the same every week. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. Okay? Now normally I come on at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time live. Uh, when I get my internet issues worked out, then I'll be back uh, doing that. Same with my No More Genie series, because I know I have some more stuff to post there. Just been having lots of issues. I'll tell you about that later. But anyway, so if you want to support me, you can look at my paypal.me link, and you can also go to Amazon Smile and support Prophet David Taylor NFP. Appreciate that. And then I'm getting closer to getting my music of where I want it to be. So I'm going to start featuring my music on this channel as well, so you can see my music and minstrel and psalmist ministry as well as my prophetic utterance and uh, prophesying ministry so the, all that's going to be on this channel so uh, as always before I come out here I ask the Lord what he has to say and uh, you know find scriptures or find whatever the Holy Ghost wants me to do <clears throat> because if the Holy Ghost isn't saying anything I'm not saying anything because to prophesy means to speak by divinely inspired utterance. It means that the Lord is giving you something to say. And he's speaking through you. It's not you. That's why I always stress that. Okay? <clears throat> so, I asked the Lord, uh, like I always do, what was it he wanted me to deliver to the body of Christ? And what he said was, the phrase was, give me the Holy Ghost. That's a prophetic word for today. So what does that mean? Let's break that down. Because as always, you know, I like to give practical application so that you can understand exactly what God means by what he says. Because what good does it do? Like the Bible says, sometimes when we speak in tongues, if we don't have an interpreter, then how have we benefited? And uh, you need to understand the prophetic word. It's got to be confirming something. You've got to understand what the Lord is trying to say to you for it to do you any good. So... What the Lord wants us to know in terms of give me the Holy Ghost, it means that God is trying to give an increase in different anointings. Now, the way the anointing works, if you're not familiar with that word, that word anointing in English actually comes from a Hebrew word that means rubbing or smearing with oil. So when you see the anointing, it's talking about oil, which is always a sign of the Holy Ghost in Scripture. And what that means is that God takes a part of himself and basically rubs you with it. That's actually what the anointing is. That the power that God has to do something, the Holy Spirit takes part of that essence, that substance, and rubs it in your spirit. That's actually what it means to be anointed. That's why in the Old Testament, when King David was anointed or the kings would be chosen, the prophet would pour oil on their heads. Well, that was symbolic of the Holy Spirit giving them the kingly anointing because you cannot be king over God's people without an anointing okay that's where that come from comes from so it means the rubbing or the smearing of oil so what that means is that you need to look at the different anointings in your life because I would dare say you have more than one for example if you're supposed to be married there's an anointing to be married if you are an athlete there's an anointing to do your sport. If you're a speaker, there's an anointing to speak. If whatever kind of gifts in the spirit you're walking in, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, miracles, faith, you know, whatever your your uh, whatever gifts you operate in. If you actually walk in a fivefold office, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, or if you are a deacon, an elder, or a bishop, or if you have the ministry of helps. Or if you're a writer, if you're a scribe, if you're a minstrel, you're a psalmist, if you're an administrator, like a Daniel or a Joseph, you're an educator or an administrator, whatever it is that God has created you to do, he anointed you to do what he wants you to do. He put a part of himself in you, in your spirit, to accomplish the purpose for which he birthed you twice. He birthed you once in the natural through your mother and your father, then he birthed you again in the spirit through Jesus Christ's labor on the cross and into the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Two birthdays, the day you came out of your mother's womb and the day you came out of your heavenly mother, which is New Jerusalem. Okay? Well, there's a reason that you are the way you are. And so God puts his anointings, his giftings, his graces 
upon you through the Holy Spirit to empower you or enable you to do what he wants you to do. Well, what the Lord is looking to do in this season is to increase, give you more of that anointing, give you more. Now, the Holy Spirit is a person, but he can release more of his power, more of his anointing, more of his ability to you. And that's what God is looking to do in this season. What does that mean? That's really good news. Because whenever God is giving an increase like that, whenever God is turning it up like that, that means that there's going to be new opportunities, new blessings, new ministries, new doors to be open, new things coming your way that you are going to need an increased level of power from God to deal with. But that also means that you made the cut. <laughs> what do I mean by that, that you made the cut? I mean, in Matthew 25, when the Lord talks about, well, no, that's the end of the world. When in Matthew, I think it's 19, when the Lord talks about the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. The foolish virgins are the, the people, the Christians that didn't stay full of the Holy Ghost. They weren't full of the Holy Spirit. So when the Lord moved, when the bridegroom came, they were left out. The wise virgins were the ones that kept their lamps trimmed and burning, meaning their lamps stayed full of oil. So they stayed full of the Holy Ghost. That's what that means. So when the Lord came in, they were able to move forward and they were able to go in with the bridegroom with whatever God was doing. So that's the way the Lord operates. When the Lord is ready to move, he's just going to show up suddenly. And everybody that's ready to go is going to go. That's why you have some Christians that have been stuck in the same place for years. You ever notice that? You ever notice if you've been in church any amount of time, you know some people that are exactly the same as they were and where they were when you met them. They haven't moved on. Do you know why? Because they won't receive God's word. They won't receive his instruction. They won't receive a greater anointing. They won't do what the Lord says do. They keep telling God, I'm only going to serve you the way I want to serve you. <laughs> they keep telling God, I'm only going to do it my way. You will not have graduation or increase when you are telling God that. You have to come before God and surrender. You have to say what Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. You have to surrender to God's will and his purposes. And when, he, when you do that, then he can use you and take you from faith to faith, level to level, glory to glory. So if God is releasing a prophetic word that tells us that we should be seeking more of the Holy Ghost, give me the Holy Ghost, that means that there's an increase in the anointing and an increase in the spirit that he wants to release. And if God wants to give you an increase in the spirit, that is good news because that means you made the cut. That means that whatever the Lord has <clears throat> next in the pipe or next on the page or whatever's coming down the road, that means he wants you to be ready to move with him when it comes. And that's why he's releasing that extra anointing and grace to you. So that's a really good sign because the opposite is what you don't want to hear from the Lord. When the Lord says what he said in Revelation, that because you're neither hot or cold, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. You don't want to hear that prophetically from the Lord. You don't want to hear from the Lord what he said to the first generation that came out of Egypt, that they were going to wander and die in the wilderness. They weren't going to make it in the promised land. You don't want the Lord to say what he said to King Saul, that he would have established you, but because you were double-minded, he's going to take the kingdom from you and give it to a neighbor that's better than you. You don't want to hear anything. If God says something like that, you're in trouble because that means he's cutting you off. That means you didn't make the cut. That means you have been so disobedient, so wishy-washy, so hot and cold back and forth with God for so long until he ain't worried about trying to use you anymore. He ain't worried about trying to get any glory from your life. He's going to let you wander in the wilderness till you die or you're going to die soon like King Saul or you're going to get spit out of Jesus' mouth. Okay, you don't, if the Lord, now if the Holy Ghost told me to say something like that, I would say it, make no mistake. But that's not the prophetic word for today. But if you ever get a word like that, that's, that's trouble. That's really bad news. That means that the Lord is tired of fooling with you. That means you have been inconsistent and unfaithful and disobedient and serving God your own way. And the Bible says very clearly, my spirit shall not always strive with man. You know what that means? God is telling us in no uncertain terms that he ain't going to fool with us forever. You don't have forever to get yourself together with the Lord. 
So that's why he says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. That means the first time God calls you, answer, and answer with a mind towards obedience. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't make your, don't be stiff neck. Don't make your hard heart. Don't tell God no. Don't give God the stiff arm. Don't tell God I'll catch up with you later because I got some things to do. There's some life I want to live that I'm going to come back around to Jesus. Don't respond to God that way. When God calls you the first time, answer. Answer him and answer him with obedience and a willingness to obey. Okay? But if you develop a pattern of being wishy-washy in and out, always in your feelings, inconsistent, just doing what you want to do, just paying tithes when you get ready instead of paying tithes off of every check and just not doing none of what the Lord say do, then if the Lord releases a prophetic word that you were cut off, then that's bad news, man. Fortunately, that's not the word for today. Fortunately, the word for today, for those of you that are listening to this broadcast and those of you where the Spirit of God gives you a witness on the inside as I'm talking, <clears throat> he's trying to let you know that there are good things coming down the pipe. Now, also with that, I must warn you that as, as they say, new level, new devil. That's the truth. Okay? When God is getting ready to increase you to a new level, the, the demons and the forces that oppose you and the things that are trying to stop you from get to, getting to where you need to go in God and in life are going to turn up. Okay? And sometimes you can, you can be in situations you've never been in before. And you can encounter maybe some demons you haven't dealt with before. Maybe you can encounter some temptation that you never dealt with before. Uh, for example, let me give you some examples. If you come into some money, if you ain't never had no money, and then you come into some money, then you're dealing with temptations that you've never dealt with before because you never have money on that level. Uh, let's say you, you get fame. Let's say all of a sudden everybody knows who you are. If all of a sudden you get famous, there's going to be some temptations that come with that fame that you haven't dealt with before because you've never been at that level of fame. Okay? Let's say you get married and you've never been married before. Well, there's going to be some temptations that come uh, with that marriage because you've never been there before. Okay? So, as they say, new level, new devil. So, another thing that's going to happen with the anointing, with this oil, with this increase, with this increase that the Spirit of God is going to give you is that he's going to prepare you so that when you have to start to fight your enemies on that new level, you'll have the grace and the ability to do it because you can't stand against the devil in your own name. Okay? You can't fight Satan and the demons and the kingdom of darkness in your own name. It's not going to happen. Okay? Jesus' name is a name that's above every name. Jesus has the diadem. That means the crown of crowns. That means he's the king of kings. That means whatever kings there are, he's king over all of them. That means he's the lord of lords. That means whoever, whatever lords there are, landlords, slumlords, whatever lords there are, Jesus, his name, his lordship is above every name, every lordship. Okay? He's the one, Jesus is the one that has the keys of hell and death. He's the one that descended into the lower parts of the earth and led captivity captive. And what that means is that the Lord beat the devil at his own game and the Lord snatched the keys of hell and death from hell and death. And now they're his keys because the Lord won them by his sinless life, his death, burial and resurrection. OK, and so Father God rewarded Jesus for that by giving him a name that's above every name, by exalting him all the way higher than any other name. <clears throat> So you can't come before God in your name. You have to come before God in Jesus' name. And you can't stand against the devil in your name. You've got to stand against Satan and the demons in the name of Jesus. Okay? So with this increased anointing, with this more of the Holy Ghost, more of his anointing and grace, that we're poised to receive when you reach those new demons, when you encounter that, then you're going to need the grace to be able to overcome that because it may be some stuff you've never seen before. Okay? So that's why God, God is never going to let you go into a situation completely unprepared. You may not know everything, but the Lord is going to give you something. He's going to give you a word. He's going to give you something so you're not just out there. So before all this happens, before all this happens in your life, right now, this Sunday, 
he's telling us that he's releasing more of the Holy Ghost, a greater anointing, an increase in the anointings that you have and the things that you can do by the Spirit. That is now increasing so that when this new level comes, you'll be ready for all the blessings that are on that level and all the challenges and temptations that are on that level. Okay? So it's really time to rejoice. That means that that you made the cut. That means the Lord is moving forward and he's taking you with him. The bridegroom has come and he's moving on to some new things and you are a part of that operation. And that's the best news all day. Because <laughs> I don't want the Lord to consign me to the wilderness. I don't want to wander till I'm done. Because what that means is that 10 years from now, my life won't have changed. <laughs> that means 10 years from now, I'll still be at the same level I'm at now. And that's, oh, that's not what you want. You don't want to be wandering in circles for decades out your life. Ten years from now, I want to be at much higher levels. Ten years from now, I want to have much more to show. Ten years from now, I want to have everything, you know, accomplished that I want to accomplish in the next ten years. And I want God to lift me according to his will. Not my will now, but according to his will and according to what he's leading me to do. That's what you want. And if you're still in that slot and you're still in that vein, then it's a good day. Okay? So... Again, I'm not live, but if you have any prayer requests, uh, put them on my Facebook page or put them on my Twitter, and I promise you I will pray. Okay? So we just put them on there, and I'll pray. Just put them on there because I'm not doing this live. I'm, I'm uploading this video. Okay? But that's what's coming in your life. So I want you to be encouraged. And uh, we're going to say a prayer, and then we're going to seal that. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you thanking you for your prophetic word thanking you for giving us more of the Holy Ghost, uh, meaning an increase in the anointings that you've put upon us. And we release that right now, release that right now in Jesus' name, an increase in the anointing, an increase in the anointing of healing, an increase in the anointing of miracles, an increase in tongues, an increase in word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, an increase in finances and money and knowledge about money, an increase in marriage, something to break open a new depth of closeness and intimacy in your marriage, an increase in children, those that have been trying to get pregnant. We release the spirit of fertility. We release the spirit of birth. We release that for you are the God of fertility, oh God, just like you gave Abraham and Sarah a baby, even at an advanced age. We release the anointing and the increase upon writers, upon scribes, minstrels, psalmists, leaders, administrators, workers, oh God, artisans, in every walk that you have anointed your children in your body. We receive that increase and we release that increase in Jesus' name so that we might walk in it. We thank you for it, Father. We believe you for it. We know that you are a good God, gracious and loving and kind and merciful and, and love us so much with, with a depth of love that we can't even put into words. So we bless your name, O oh God, and we honor you. We thank you for being so good to us. And thank you for being the true and living God and opening our eyes to that truth so that we're not deceived and serving other gods, but that we might serve you all the days of our life. And we thank you for it, O oh God. Please receive the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to your name. And we pray to you, Father, in Jesus' name, the only righteous one. We are not righteous in ourselves. It's because of him and his blood and his sacrifice that we can even have audience with you. And we thank you for the precious Holy Spirit, because we wouldn't even be connected to Father nor Son if it weren't for the Holy Ghost. So we give you the honor and the praise that you are so worthy of that is due your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, I'm blessed by that. I'm excited. I received that for myself. I felt the anointing as I was praying. I felt it um, as it was uh, rising up in me and coming through me. And so I'm receiving that increase and I'm expecting to walk in uh, increase in all the levels and all the different places that I'm anointed. Because remember, I always tell you, I tell you every week that I'm doing what I'm telling you to do. Anything I'm talking about, I'm doing it or I'm going through it. Okay? So, I'm excited about that. So, leave me some comments on the video. And also, remember, I have these videos on YouTube now. So, you can go to my Prophet David Taylor YouTube channel. The best way to find me online is hashtag PDT. Because I hashtag PDT everything I do. So if you want to find me on YouTube, just look up Prophet David Taylor, hashtag PDT, and all of my prophetic words, I started with this year, I started with 2018. So all of my prophetic words, including my No More Genies teaching, is on YouTube now. So I'm trying to get that all caught up, because um, we're in October now, I don't have it quite all the way up to October, but I'm uploading all of these 
of prophetic teachings that I have done. And uh, so they're also on YouTube. And then eventually I'm going to finish getting them on SoundCloud and all that stuff I talked about. But I want to make sure that the prophetic word of God is available as many places as possible. So any type of financial support that you give me is going to help me do that. And then when you're on social media, please like and share. That helps because we want the prophetic word to get out because the saints of God need to hear that there's an increase in the anointing so they can expect it, receive it, walk in it, and so they can be prepared for the next level. All right? God bless you. Thank you for those of you that watched this video. Uh, as soon as I'm able to come back on live, I will. I will let you know. So just pray about that for me and so I get uh, everything worked out. And uh, so I will see you next week. God bless you and have a great week.